Hi, welcome back to our lecture in which we are discussing the Aircraft Maintenance Planning Pro. In the second part of the lecture, we are going to discuss how to formulate the Maintenance Check Scaling Pro according to our traditional approach, an MLP formulation. This formulation can be very useful, especially if we are looking into the short-term planning of these maintenance checks. And this will help us also to understand what is this maintenance check scaling problem. But at the end of this video, we're going to see that there are other requirements usually associated with this problem that may compromise the usefulness of this MLP formulation to solve the long-term maintenance check scaling problem. So let's start by discussing what is this maintenance check scaling problem. So the problem consists in scheduling a set of maintenance checks associated with the number of aircraft that we do have in our fleet. We have to define the starting date of each one of these checks in order to respect their intervals. And as we have seen in the previous lecture, these check intervals are defined according to the intervals of the most restrictive tasks within this check. The goal is to minimize the maintenance costs in the long term. And to do that, we're going to exploit the maximum we can the maintenance check intervals that are given to us. So we are going to minimize the wasted interval that we're going to leave after we check our maintenance check. This wasted part we're going to call interval lost. And it is the difference between the predefined interval, defining flight hours, flight cycle and calendar days, and the value of the usage parameters at the moment that the check is scheduled. These are the flight hours, flight cycle and calendar days between the last check and the new check at the moment that we are scaling this new check. Note that if this interval lost increases, the number of checks and maintenance costs in the long term will also increase. This is because the better we use the check interval given to us, the later we perform a maintenance check and the later we have to restart counting our usage parameters and the later we have to schedule a subsequent maintenance check. And while solving this problem, we have to subject our solution to the fact that we do have a set of aircraft in the fleet, which are at the given state at the moment that we start scheduling our checks. We also have a limited amount of resources available to perform maintenance every day. And this can refer to maintenance slots, but also maintenance teams, skill types of uh, technicians, but also machines, or other type of materials or components that we may use. And finally, we have to know what is the list of predefined maintenance checks that we have to schedule and what are the associated due dates and elapsed times of these checks. A typical objective for this problem is the minimization of the costs associated with maintenance. However, as discussed in the previous slide, in the long term, this can be associated with the minimization of the intervals lost. This is what we're going to use in this lecture. And we are going to multiply this interval loss by a cost that will reflect the fact that if we waste part of the interval, we will eventually have more maintenance checks being performed in the future. An alternative objective could also be the maximization of the aircraft availability for operations. Constraints in this problem include the need to schedule the check before the end of the interval of the respective maintenance check, and the verification of the duration of the maintenance elapsed time. This elapsed time control is needed to check the utilization of the resources during the time that we are performing the maintenance check. This is done in constraints C3 and C4. In constraint C3, we are verifying if the limit regarding the maintenance slots is not violated in any day of our time or horizon. And in constraint C4, we verify the same thing, but regarding the total workload, so the total number of technicians that we do have available to perform maintenance. In terms of notation, we need three types of sets. We need a set of aircraft in our fleet, we need a set of maintenance checks that we have to schedule, and a set of time periods in which we're going to divide our time horizon. And we need two types of decision variables. The first one that defines the starting time of each maintenance check associated with an aircraft, K, and a matrix of control decision variables, NKJT, that defines if aircraft K is performing maintenance J at time T or not. For parameters, we need to know what are the due dates associated with each maintenance check J from all our aircraft K. We need to know what are these costs of anticipating a maintenance check J by one day. And we need to know what are the elapsed times associated with each maintenance check that we have to schedule. 
To control the resources, we also need to know what are the number of maintenance slots that we do have per day and the number of person hours that we do have per day to perform maintenance. And related with this, we need also to know what are the person hours required to perform each one of our maintenance checks that we have to schedule. And if we use this nomenclature, we can have the following mix integer linear model. So the objective is to minimize the wasted uh, interval multiplied by this cost, which tells us what are the costs associated with anticipating by one day our maintenance check regarding the full interval that was available to us. And we are subjecting our decisions to the fact that we have to schedule, so the starting date of a given check, has to be lower than the due date associated with that specific check. Constraint C2 will guarantee that we are controlling the elapsed type of these maintenance uh, checks. So between the starting time of our maintenance check, according to what we defined, and the total elapsed time of that check, our control matrix MKJT has to have a value equal to 1. And if we know that, and if we sum for all aircraft and for all types of uh, tasks, what are the aircraft performing maintenance at each time t, we need to guarantee in constraint C3 that this is lower than the number of slots that we do have available. And we do the same thing for the work resources that we're going to allocate to our checks. So we multiply this MKGT by the number of person needed to perform this maintenance check, and this has to be lower or equal than the number of personnel, technicians, that we have available to perform this task at a given time t. And this is the model that we can use especially to schedule short-term uh, maintenance checks. But this is not useful in the long term. Do you know why? Can you think about what is the implication of some of our assumptions and formulations that we had in the previous model that will stop us to have this plan for the long term? I'll let you think about this. But besides this, there are also some other practical requirements that may compromise what we are doing here with our mixing integer linear programming. So, for instance, in practice, airlines may require that no C checks, which are checks that take several days, weeks even, that no C checks are allowed during the peak periods. And this refers to the summer periods or also holiday season in which there is a high demand for flights. So the airlines want to have their fleet available to fly. And in some cases, for some airlines or MRO service providers, the sea checks, the heavy maintenance, they are stopped during the weekends and bank holidays. That means that our elapsed time in terms of calendar days will be influenced by the moment that we are scaling a given maintenance check. Furthermore, usually C checks require a large amount of work when starting the check. So some airlines or MRO service providers may require that we don't have two C checks starting on the same day, that we need to have some space, a given number of days, between the times that we are starting consecutive C checks. And there is also a factor that sometimes is used by airlines, which is that we can eventually use uh, an extension to the intervals that we have considered so far. And this extension, called tolerance, can be used in cases that we cannot perform maintenance before we reach that uh, limit uh, according to the interval, but the use of this tolerance has implication in the following maintenance check. So if we use, let's say, uh, 100 flight hours extra beyond what was defined in our interval, this 100 flight hours extra will have to be removed from the interval that is to be used for the following maintenance check. So the decisions in the previous check will influence what will be the interval in the future check. So how to address all these requirements in an optimization framework? So which type of solution can we use that is flexible enough to accommodate these and potentially even other requirements that we experience in practice? So this is what we're going to discuss in the next lecture. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.